Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson again with Organizational Behavior. We are now on Chapter 4 and we're going to learn about individual attitudes and behaviors. Our learning objectives for this chapter are identify the major work attitudes that affect work behaviors, list the key set of behaviors that matter for organizational performance, understand the link between work attitudes and ethics, and understand cross-cultural differences in job attitudes and behaviors at work. So let's start with work attitudes. You have your attitude, your job satisfaction, and your organizational commitment, all of which are definitely intertwined with each other. Your attitude, how do you feel about your job and the individuals that you work with? Your job satisfaction, are you satisfied with your job or is there a lot of dissatisfaction with it. Organizational commitment. How committed are you to your organization and to your job? So let's open up that organizational behavior toolbox and put more tools in there. So how can you be happier at work? And this can help everyone. I feel like I'm very happy at work, but when I read this, I say, hey, I can probably do a little bit better in this area, and I'm sure all of you can learn from this as well. Have a positive attitude about it. Uh, are you positive about going to work or do you just go into work and say, ah, I'm here, it's another day and I just have to get through it. Or you could be positive and have a good attitude about it. A good fit with the job and company are important to your happiness. So if you, we talked about in the last chapter, if, you, if you're a good fit for the position and a good fit for the company, then you're probably a little happier at work. So try and find a job that you're a good fit at. Get accurate information about the job and the company, right? So you want to make sure that you're fully informed. I, I know there's a company that I went to uh, to work for, and they wouldn't let me see the individuals that would be reporting to me. They wouldn't let me see the system that they, that I was going to be working on. Uh, I found it kind of strange, but later on when I started working there, I understood why. Because one, they were working on a DAS system, and then the individuals uh, that were going to be working for me, they actually uh, probably thought they were going to scare me away. Develop good relationships at work. You have to have good relationships with your peers, with your managers, and also with those that report to you. Uh, pay is important, but job characteristics matter more uh, to your job satisfaction. Uh, I'll tell you right now that that little boost, the good feeling that you get from uh, uh, receiving a pay raise, it, it for at least for me, it wears off pretty quickly. Uh, you know, but you know, I won't say that that's not a major determinant in in some of the things that I do because I, you know, I do have a family, I do have people uh, that have needs that I that I need to accommodate, but. Uh, it's it's not everything. If you have a flexible schedule where you can take the kids to school, that means a little bit more than if you're going to get paid five thousand dollars more uh, at a different company. Uh, be proactive in managing your organizational life. Right, always everything in business should be also everything in life. Be proactive. Uh, don't be reactive. Reactive is like uh, let's say in football you're backpedaling and you have to uh, uh, see how to adjust uh, in, in accordance with what happens. Be proactive. Go forward. Move forward and get the right things done. And know when to leave. Sometimes like they say uh, they got the new commercial and it said it's annoying to play cards with, with Kenny Rogers and he says no one to hold them and no one to fold them. All right? No one to walk away. And when the deal's done, right, that you have to know when to leave. If it's time to leave the company, it's definitely time to leave the company. I had a vice president who uh, didn't like me for whatever reason, and every day I would come into the office because I had a suit on. He would say, How, how'd the interview go? And it wouldn't be right when I came in the office, it'd be around lunchtime or something. I would come back in and he'd say, How'd the interview go? All right? And I, I could tell he was uh, attempting to drive me out. So when he, when he asked me that, uh, I would say like on the uh, career build, builder commercial, I would say, nailed it, right? And just made a joke out of it. So positive work attitudes. So all of these things go into job satisfaction and, and organizational commitment. Your personality, your person environment fit, job characteristics, your psychological contract. What's the, you know, not a written contract, but a contract saying like, hey, I agreed to come here and do these things and I'm actually getting them done. 
uh, your organizational justice, work relationships, stress, and your work-life balance, right? Uh, you have to have a good work-life balance. That's something that's stressed throughout organizations uh, very deeply these days. So assessing work attitudes in the workplace. So SAS uh, Institute, I believe they have a case uh, of that in the book, and it's very, very interesting company. Be sure to look it up, Google it. Uh, the SAS Institute is a leader in the art of treating employees well. The privately owned software company headquartered in Cary, North Carolina, is famous for its free medical care. Check that out. Benefits are free. Sports facilities, subsidized on-site child care, flexible work hours and true dedication to work-life balance. So what more do you need? And I remember doing a study on this quite some time ago and it actually had to do with uh, with Google and, and they were showing that what they're actually doing is eliminating all barriers to success, right? Uh, and when they eliminate those uh, barriers to success, if the person cannot be successful, then whose fault is it? It's that employee's fault. If I have free medical, free benefits, sports facilities so I can go work out, on-site child care where you know they can watch my kids, hey, I'm, I'm good to go. Flexible work hours, what more can you want from a company? And I'll, I'll be sure to add to our video library uh, the, the video of Google and the Googleplex and, and let you see how nice that is there and how well they treat their employees. Uh, it's a great, great video. So assessing work attitudes in the workplace, you have attitude surveys, uh, systematic attitude tracking, and uh, exit interview. Exit interview is a great way to take a poll of, of how people feel, what they think of the company. You'll get some very valuable information from that. So discussion, I want you guys to look at the discussion questions on your own. You, you're hearing my, my lecture and you can read the discussion questions and figure them out and, and kind of get more insight into, uh, into our topic. Work behaviors. So you have your job performance and hopefully you're all performing well. Hopefully I'm performing well and I perform well today as well. Uh, you have your organizational citizenship behavior. We spoke of that. You have absenteeism. Are you, not you, but is the individual not coming to work? Is it, is it a, a reoccurring problem? And you have turnover. Do we have comp people coming into the company and coming out? If you see a lot of turnover, there's going to be a reason. What's the reason? Maybe the job is just too hard. Maybe the training is not good. There, there are a variety of reasons uh, that there could be that individuals come in and come out of the company. Factors that have the strongest influence over work behaviors, your job performance, citizenship, absenteeism, and turnover, just as we just discussed. So under job performance has general mental abilities, right? Maybe you just don't have the capability to complete the job. How we are treated at work, how your manager treats you. Stress, how much stress you have. Some can handle the stress better than others. Positive work attitudes and personality, right? Is your personality a fit? Is your work attitude a fit? Citizenship, uh, treatment at work, your personality, positive work attitudes, and uh, the age of the employee. Uh, absenteeism uh, could be due to health problems. Uh, Work-life balance issues, right? You might be like, man, I need to take a day off because my, my spouse has been complaining at me, uh, indicating that, that I work too much. Uh, positive work attitudes and also the age of the employee. So if you see a little minus mark, as you can see at the very bottom, it says negative relationships are indicated with the with the negative in, in those categories. Uh, turnover, so poor performance, right? If you're perform not performing well, yeah, you're probably gonna uh, leave the company. Uh, positive work attitudes uh, also has a negative relationship. Stress. Stressed out, can't do the job, just going to jump up and leave. I've seen it before. Personality, uh, maybe your personality doesn't fit and you just need to go. And age and tenure of the employee. And I, I will say with age, uh, we learn a lot more. I've learned a lot more. I'm a lot different in my work experience than I was when I was first out of college. Definitely learned a lot and I continue to learn. So organizational citizenship behavior <clears throat> and absenteeism. Organizational citizenship behavior are voluntary actions beyond the scope of normal job duties that contribute to the effective functioning of an organization. On the other hand, absenteeism costs companies an estimated $74 billion annually. 
So people are not at work, you don't feel good, you hurt something, all kind. Maybe maybe it's the children that don't feel good. Seventy-four billion annually. So it's obvious reason why companies are now looking into uh, health programs, keeping people healthy, keeping people fit, so that they don't have to call in sick. I I never call in sick. Uh, I called in sick one time, I think, in the last uh, uh, 10 years, and that was just for like one day, and I probably could have went back uh, midday. So it, if companies can pe- are trying to figure out how to keep people healthy, keep them more athletic, and, and they won't run into these instances. So open up that toolbox again, uh, dealing with late coworkers. So number one, try to get to the root cause and find out what's making your coworker unhappy. Uh, number two, make sure that the lateness does not go without any negative consequences. So if you're a manager, you have to make sure that uh, they you just can't let them just keep walking in late every single day. You have to do something about it. Uh, make an effort to schedule meetings around everyone's schedules. Uh, I do that. I find out everybody's break and lunch schedule is, and then I have a little grid, so I try to schedule uh, my meetings uh, around those times. Uh, when people are late, be sure to ask them to compensate by uh, by uh, compensate, such as by doing extra work. Uh, that one I won't say I'm a hundred percent in agreement with, uh, because uh, you know it doesn't always send the most appropriate message. Uh, and I, I just like to deal with the actual issue and say that you know you're late, and this is what's going to happen if you continue to be late. Uh, shortly before the meeting starts, so if you're having a meeting, send everybody a reminder. You know that's one you can maybe do. I'm not saying you necessarily have to. Uh, reward timeliness. Uh, well, you know people should actually be on time and be on time yourself. That's the big one. If you're not there and you're always late, then they're going to do the same thing. People sometimes feel entitled and they say, "Well, he did it, so I'm going to do it." All right? You know, he he gets to get up and leave whenever he wants to, so I'm going to do the same thing. Well, you know what? It doesn't work like that. I'm an exempt employee. Uh, you're an hourly employee. Uh, it's a little bit different. So turnover. Employees leave their jobs for many reasons, including performance. Could be their performance. Could be the performance of a team. Could be a performance of a manager. Job dissatisfaction. Maybe they just don't like the job. Personality. The personality does not fit with what's going on at the company. And their age. Younger people, they're going to have a lot more turnover. Uh, the day and age, and I won't say it's completely gone, uh, but for the most part of, of being at a company 30, 40 years, it's not here anymore. company I currently work for, I see a lot of longevity. And I also saw a lot of longevity at the company I worked at uh, prior to this one. But, uh, but me personally, the longest I've been at any company uh, has been seven years, and that's just in, indicative of uh, the type of environment that uh, that I've been in, and in newer generation, knowing that hey, if there's a better opportunity, then you go take it because the companies are not necessarily going to take care of you in the long run, and that's pretty much you know the sentiment that's out there. Uh, but you know, prior generations, man, you had people uh, working for companies 30 and 40 years; they never knew anything else because they've always worked at the same company and uh, company tenure uh, how long have you been there right uh, if you've been there 30 years you're probably not gonna leave the company on a whim uh, but if you've only been there two years and somebody offers you a, a better opportunity then you're probably gone so more more tools to put in your toolbox so tips for leaving your job gracefully and I have uh, definitely feel like I, I've done a great job of, of leaving leaving uh, the jobs that I've worked at very gracefully uh, don't quit on an impulse I saw a guy got mad at the, 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 the director of the department, just gets up and leaves. And I know he wasn't interviewing. I know he didn't have any other jobs lined up, just gets up and leaves. Don't do things on a knee-jerk reaction. Think about it and, and work through it. Then go look for another job and land another job and then leave. Don't quit too often. So you can't jump around uh, from company to company. I have people I try and uh, assist them with their resume, but it shows that they jumped around, jumped around, jumped around. And, uh, you know, it doesn't look great on the resume. And I, I will say even my last transition, I was only at the company two years and then uh, moved on to another opportunity. But, you know, I had a good explanation as to why. And I don't foresee not being at the company that I'm at now uh, for, uh, for quite some time. Uh, when you decide to leave, tell your boss first and be nice, right? Don't just come in there and say, I'm leaving, I'm out of here, you deal with this mess, right? Be nice, you should have a resignation letter that you give them, they'll communicate it to HR, HR will communicate back to you with the next steps.
Uh, don't badmouth your employer. Don't don't badmouth the employer. Uh, maybe you may have to boomerang and come back uh, one day, right? Uh, and leave leave that door open. If they leave it open for you, don't close the door. Uh, guard your professional reputation, right? You you want to have a reputation out there, and you want it to be a good one. Uh, finish your ongoing work and don't leave your team in a bad spot. You know, tie tie up all of your loose ends. Uh, you know that's another thing that you definitely need to do. Don't leave them in lurch just because you know because you're leaving the company or maybe even they told you that you're leaving the company. And definitely don't steal for the comp from the company. Don't uh, you know load up on on post-it notes, pens, and and tab tablets of of paper uh, because you're you're leaving the company. So discussion questions, I'll leave that to uh, to you guys to read and to uh, think of in your mind and kind of walk through uh, through the process of answering those questions. Uh, job attitudes, behavior, and ethics. So ethical work environment, happier employees, right? Because they feel like, hey, you know, if I see something unethical, I'm going to go ahead and report it. Now this is a, a, a different uh, type of animal strong organizational commitment right you've been at this company 50 40 years 30 years 20 years you love this company this company is your life but if you have a strong organizational commitment sometimes employees are less likely to recognize and report unethical behavior right they're like hey you know this is what we have to do to get it done and they understand and they uh, you know don't want to report anybody in the company job attitudes around the globe so just take a quick glance at this uh, no effect on job satisfaction. So if you have work family conflict, and uh, it's no effect on job satisfaction if you live in a, a collective culture. Uh, if you have a lower job satisfaction, uh, if you live in a individualistic like the United States culture. And also empowerment. And when I say work family conflict, I mean that, okay, kids sick, what do you do? Right, you don't have a laptop that you can work from at home. Do you go to work or do you come, you know, get the child? So obviously you should go, you know, get the child, and then that leaves, you know, the work family. Obviously the conflict, empowerment, higher job satisfaction, uh, United States, Mexico, and Poland, lower job satisfaction, India. Uh, you know, from the studies that I that I've seen, they say in India that they really don't uh, prefer to have to be empowered in that manner. So lastly, discussion, uh, I want you guys to look at these discussion questions as well. Which factors related to work attitudes in the Western culture should also be related to work attitudes in other cultures? So figure out these questions. Uh, think about it on your own. It's just to open up your mind and uh, you know, kind of cultivate your, your thinking towards uh, better, bigger, stronger organizational behavior. As always, have a good day and a great week.